What's up? What's up? What's up? Another Thursday, another my floors. Yo, today most of the people probably are in the London. Uh, most of the crowd, at least, is in London meetup. But yes. we know they're gonna watch later, so we're just still gonna do it. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. And if anybody's like always in the comments, joining us here and then and, and doing all the fun stuff, of course, interact. If not, we're just gonna blab about technical, about uh, building websites, about a flow SEO, about all the good stuff. Um, so yeah, it's quite casual today. If anybody's watching and want to ask something, just ask. Cool day. And today, of course, eh, we're joined by Shane, by Digital Shane himself. He's like the What's up? the new up and coming technical SEO guru. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. That's fair. That's fair. I mean, it is. No, I don't want to take that title. Nor I'm interested. <laughs> <laughs> so. So let's title somebody else and let's do it with you because I think you're you know what you're doing and I know I know enough to know that you I know enough to know that you know what you're doing. That's like the the, the core kind of thing. The uh, the key here disclaimer legal disclaimer is I appreciate Colleen tweeting it this way. This is the basics. We're just getting into the basics today. We may go. Who knows where this will go? But um, the checklist that we're going to walk through, the checklist I've made. Um, it, it's really just covering some of those core essential things you can do in web uh, that, that was the goal of it. And I don't want people to think it's anything other than that, or it's something more complex. Um, so I, let, that, let me share the, the, actually the, uh, one sec, let me, uh, set this up before people jump in and let's present that to the people so we can all know what we're talking about wait one sec is this one is this yeah all right so we're talking of course about um this am i showing it no yeah yeah I, no, I see it it's there okay cool so we're talking about this checklist that shane made uh it's the shane we're talking to today uh and he called this i love it it's called like in a, in a your typical <laughs> client first fashion <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh yeah it, and yeah continue it definitely has a document feel that was the goal of it that, that's why it has those links all along the way you can literally check it like it i made check boxes in webflow um yeah the goal of it is to share uh to feel like a document um if you will so yeah Oh, wow. That's actually cool. Oh, wow. Yeah. I didn't notice that the first time I was looking at it. Little basic animations, hence the checklist yeah. part. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome, man. So, yeah. so yeah. So, anyways, um, so we have this and we there's basic steps. Uh, we might run through the steps. We might run through other stuff. Uh, we're just going to keep it casual. But the call is to let people know a few things, I think. And I want to start at... Um, by jumping back a little bit to the Figma board we prepared prior, okay? okay. So let's do, let's do it, right? Let me locate the same. By just kind of explaining what is technical, because I think the biggest issue we have is that the the understanding of like what SEO is. Because SEO, some people think SEO is lighthouse score. Some people think that SEO yeah. is like blogs, writing your shit, you know, stuff in the blog. And uh and I think that's like the the hardest part of it because there's not yeah. so many factors and technical is just one part of it. <laughs> and there's also so much to technical that you think, how can it be just one part, right? Yeah, I think, I, and you can help spell this out too, but but there's like, you've got technical um, and that kind of leans into the developer side, right? So it's like, we're doing SEO technical, but it, some of it really pushes into like, you, you kind of need a developer to do this. Um, the content piece, um, I mean, you're hitting those keywords, you're doing stuff like that. Um, so that is just like general more marketing. Um, but then that even will push into like conversion rate optimization when you get into like designing the website, um, laying out the content, what are your keywords, H1s, like it, it just goes on and on and on. So um, maybe that's the next thing is a checklist that clearly defines these and lays these out. So it's a little more clear but yeah, yeah there's even more to it than that but yeah what are your thoughts on that my thoughts are like this so by default we pull this out which i'm good at we pull this out and this is not seo but these are three things that are seo on page off page we can actually add seo here right 
So, right. And we have technical SEO off page and on page. Now mm -hmm. we're going to today be chatting about some fundamental basics that's technical touches, because when you do SEO, usually, you know, enough code or enough development to fix the simple things like adding an HTML tag or, or, or changing some sort of canonical or stuff like that, right? The basic stuff, yeah. but some technical stuff really calls for a team to, you know, assemble Avengers assemble and Hey, we need a dev and maybe even a designer to fix some real technical big stuff, especially in the like old school platforms that would be right. Yeah. Um, and then, but then actually when you hire people to do SEO for you, um, this is usually, technical is usually just the first step of checking a, maybe we need to do this. Maybe we need to do that. It's a little bit like more of a one-off job, especially in the beginning. Right. Mm -hmm. Do you agree with that? Like if you would onboard, if you, if you onboard like an age, SEO agency, first they mm -hmm. would probably, in some cases, they would just look through your site, look at the lighthouse scores, maybe do some quick technical fixes that we're talking about today. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But then the next thing would be, they would be going to off page and on page and on page is optimizing those headings, uh, adding more content, improving, adding more pages, adding new CMS collections, which is half of the things I do like, oh, we are missing seven CMS collections guys. And here's why. And then you show your mm -hmm. headers and then you explain to the client, like, Hey, whoever built a site forgot. And then you, there's this A, B, C, D, F, G, you know, whatever. And then yeah. off page is another whole story. It's like digital PR marketing in the digital age, as in get yourself featured elsewhere. Um, even social signals is a thing. Get yourself featured in um, citations. If it's a local business, then get backlinks from valuable websites, like a lot of other stuff. So, so this is basically, usually people that do that, these two parts are, can be entirely non-technical. They just have to understand how websites work. People that do technical SEO have to understand a little bit of a technical uh, stuff, but also real deep stuff is usually fixed by a really good developer. And I'm not, not a no code developer, but an actual real code developer. Yeah. Yeah. yeah? All right. And then there's third part, which we're not going to talk. I think <laughs> my additive is there's another whole story about actually planning for all these three things. Like planning. I was going to say, where would you place, I was thinking about this, like, I don't even know where do you place like this, uh, site planning structure with internal linking like it, it's a technical but it's also it has to do with content and it also has to do with on page like it 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 sits in th all three of those i would say and it has to do it with off page as well because the team that will be doing manual outreach to blogs to other industry leaders to whatever yeah. they also have to understand what is the call because those link juice also trickles down so if they build a link to a hub yeah. that it has like links to your 10 posts on it or whatever 10 pages or 10 features on it it also adds value to those yeah. so i don't know man I honestly, we I just, know that did this we just is make in, a new category. Yeah, we just made a new category. SEO honestly, structure is that a cat? It's got to be a category, I think. Like uh, SEO structure. I mean, it's probably like now would be called this. Right? Yeah. Okay. Sure. You can say. I think, but right. for people who don't know what it means, and we're not gonna. If we start explaining what it mean, what this means. Semantics, then... two things though. Semantics is just logical SEO, but it's also how you code. So yeah, but also semantic. Uh, but also semantic, uh, SEO is, is understanding how knowledge graphs work, that your website is a knowledge graph, right? That every page has something to do with another page and there's like connections between it. Right. Yeah. Um, so let's don't get into this because otherwise we're going <laughs> to waste too much time. So I'm going to steer call... it into the checklist. Um, yes. in, in, so I, 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 this. I think I'm going to die on this hill of lighthouse scores are not SEO. They're literally just a piece of it. It's a developer tool first. Um, and that's why I made, <laughs> that's why I made this tweet and I'm going to continue to talk about this because it's really damaging. And there's a lot of horror stories in the SEO agency like world when someone simply just sends a lighthouse reading to a client or a SEMrush audit or you name it, one of these audits. And here you go, like, here's what you need to fix. That's all your SEO. 
and then clients think they're good or th or they you know they could fall anywhere in between there but a lot of times they're like okay we're good our seo is good like we have a good score um what do we need but they totally like skip content it's like okay if you have a massive content structure and all this other stuff worked out then you address technical okay you'll probably see some improvements but there's so many other steps i would take before we get there so that was i'm going to route this into the checklist that was part of the reason i made this checklist was like hey look here's the most simple basic things you can do in webflow like there's really no need to hire an agency to cover these things like these should be the essentials that are done on every webflow project um so that's where we're going to go let's get into that part of it all all right let's get into that part so I'm just going to, we're just going to work our way down this. Um, uh, do you want to take the screen? I think you should take the screen. Yeah. Yeah. Let me, uh, let me share let this. You share, uh, share, share, share what's happening. And, uh, uh, yeah. So I think it's sharing, but you're still showing uh, your screen. Uh, yes. There we go. Well. All right, cool. So, yep, this is the checklist. Um, it's clonable. You can go grab your own copy, blah, blah, blah. Um, so we just work our way down this list. I mean, really, like meta descriptions and title tags are like the bare bones. Like if you don't have these, which unfortunately I find, I'm sure you find hundreds of sites that don't have these or they're missing or they're too long or they're too short. Um, the reason... And this isn't really even a technical checklist, but I'll, I'll take it technical for a second. These are going to show up in the audit if they're not there or they're too long, too short, whatever. You might get pixel counts, whatever, because on Google, um, like only so much is going to show up. So if we just do checklist, oops, not settings, checklist, <laughs> like you see, like only so much shows up in this, right? So when you run an audit, it's going to tell you. Hey, you know, you're over that 160 character count, but not even 160 characters won't even fit all the time. So um, depending on what screen size they're on. So that's just a general idea. Um, but that's kind of what you get here. Um, and these are really you can rank for stuff in your meta description. Um, I've gotten sites to rank for stuff that's really only mentioned in a meta description. Um, now, are you going to rank high? Maybe, maybe not. But it is. It is important, um, and again, it's just like it's the it's the core foundation. So I'm not going to hammer this one out too long. I'll add I'll, I'll add one thing to this. So okay. meta titles, and meta descriptions are rewritten 60% and 70% of the time by Google. Uh, like that's yeah. what happens, right? So yeah, that's I totally that's, forgot. Yeah, that's why a lot of people start thinking. So I don't need to add them. Google will figure out, and Google will figure out. But you have to understand that your page title um, and your meta description explains to crawlers huh, what is on this page. Therefore, that's why like Google rewriting this came as a you know punishment for SEOs being cheeky and over optimizing them as opposed to explaining what is actually on the page. So yeah. Google rewrites it for the reason of when they show specific answers, specific. Uh, question as your page as a result they might want to tweak it they might want to remove the brand they might want to you know do this or that like they can pick their call you know mm -hmm. but you still have to add them and they are very mandatory just because crawlers read that first before reading the the actual body uh, of the page it will read the head and the head has that so yeah I was just easy. checking because I just thought. be obvious, explain what it is, explain uh, what problem it answers. Honestly, just think of the plot problem that this page answers, put it in the meta description, meta title. That's it. Move on. Man. Next thing, Google will take care of the rest. And also sometimes it's just going to pull text when showing your meta description, especially one of the parts of the text on the page. Keep that in mind as well. That's it, right? Yeah. I mean, um, I, I totally forgot. Yeah. And I've seen Google they rewrite stuff all the time and it's like, okay, why? And sometimes you're fighting them for a long time just to get them to accept what you put in there because you feel it's better. They don't for whatever reason. Um, I'm not going to show this example, but I did rework a, and this is what's crazy. So I reworked a meta description for e-commerce store. Um, 
just one of their blog pages, simply just one blog page. We reworked that and they were getting like anywhere from like 50 to a hundred eh, 250 to 300 impressions on average. This is just impressions, right? So this is still new. We're still measuring like the click through rate, all that good stuff. Um, but just impressions went from about five, like max of 500 or so to like thousands, um, 4,000. Uh, that's where it's at right now. Like it, it shot up from pretty much nothing to a ton. Um, so in total in the last three months, it's gotten 90,000 impressions. It's just that one, blog, this is just one blog post of one page from rewriting a meta description. So like the click through rate is bound to start going up. Um, stuff will change. And it, the, I'm just kind of testing like reworking content. Um, and I don't want to get too far out of that, but, um, I've seen a lot of people talking about it in this space and it's way easier to rewrite a piece of content than it is to pump out 10, 20, 30 new ones or something like that. So, yeah. Um, and also you can improve it and there's tools for understanding how to improve it, actually valuably improve it, not just, you know, yeah. just add more. It's not that, you know, now yeah. Google is more and more about density of content, not actually length of it, like it was a little bit before. So understanding mm -hmm. your niche and being a pro and knowing naturally, like if you understand, I noticed one thing with content, if you understand your niche very well, if you write it by understanding it, not anybody wrote it, usually it's already high scores on the all the terms used and right because just naturally, how else you can do that? Like anybody who knows anything about this will use those words. With that being said, there's just a talk before we jump to step number two. Let's say hi to Joshua, which is hey Josh, hey Joshua. What's up, Josh? <laughs> Josh and then the next thing is we have a question. So what about things like internal linking items and pages to each other? Well, that, I mean, that's internal linking, right? Um, I don't know what specifically the question is around CMS items specifically. I mean, you can reference stuff. Um, but yeah, I mean, within a blog, yeah, this is a very, I'll just, we'll just touch this real quick. In a blog, if you're writing, let's say 1500 words, you should be linking to three or four other blogs in that page. At um, least. And yeah. also at least three to four sources that are external to your to your site as in yeah. if you mention for example if we're writing now an article about meta descriptions whatever right and we mentioned that 60 percent of the time google rewrites it we should link in that 60 percent of the time to do some sort of cert, like some sort of page that has written an article about it as in hey we read this we trust this information we link to it so it's yeah. a lot of so that's one internal linking right and then if the cms items what do you think about cms items I guess maybe spell that out more exactly, unless you're yeah. understanding this and I'm not. Um, um, yeah, if you would specify about the CMS part, because I this can go many many ways. I know it. <laughs> I can I can guess at least few variations of this question that is specific <clears throat> about CMS interlinking, and that's another whole story. Like that could be an hour episode on its own because it's 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 hard and this is new for humanity. Like everybody got used to work with WordPress for ten years. Nobody knows how to do these things on Webflow because we're just creating it now. Like we're just sitting there and thinking, hey, you know, blog is no longer a blog. CMS collection is a new form of blog. So how do we create content types? How do we mix them together? How do we create CMS collections for search intents like that? Again, touching too much strategy today, technical. <laughs> so if you yeah. specify, we're going to answer it. Yeah. So <clears throat> step two, super simple. Literally just click a few buttons. Um, Frame headers will block people from like iframing their site on theirs, but like who does that for any functional purpose? I don't know. Um, just block it. Uh, I think it protects from click jacking. Um, just, just do it. Um, and then minifying all your code. Um, I looked this up cause it's like I'm not a developer. I understand generally what it's doing. It's just basically it's just getting rid of redundant code that doesn't affect how Dom is processed or loaded, um, is the, basically the definition I found. So, um, yeah, and SSL is like standard. You you, you want SSL? Let's, we don't even have to talk about that. Um, which at one point was a really big SEO factor, actually, because um, this was years yeah, ago. When it came like, out, yeah, yeah, like SSL wasn't standardized for a long time, and then it was like, oh wait, we should do this, you know. Um, so yeah, basically, your pages will load faster, um, get rid of redundant code, and um, this will help with semantic structure as well and stuff like that. 
um, which we can maybe touch on that in a little bit. Um, step three, go to your project settings, publish, set a default. Um, this, <laughs> I find a lot of sites that are published to both and you're essentially do publishing. Um, and I'm curious what, Aiva, if you have any thoughts on this, like Google really used to hit people hard for duplicate content. Um, but this, you, you already have a thought. Um, yeah. Technically, from what I was finding, publishing to both doesn't now count as duplicate because you have no ill intent. Um, but it's still a thing. Um, and it you could have issues if you don't just publish to one. There, there's other issues that could take place. It doesn't just affect SEO. Um, there's a lot of different other issues that could um, happen. And that's more of a developer thing. But what were you going to say there when I said that? I will come back to this. I wrote it down. We're going to talk about duplicate, but Colleen has a question for you before that, okay? And it's uh, this one. So about the iframe client. Oh, yeah. Um, so basically, um, this well, if you use secure frame headers, that should block people from iframing, embedding um, your site into the word, theirs. So people used to use this for all kinds of little things. There's still use cases for iframing stuff, but... Um, it's just a security measure. There is ways to hack a site and stuff like that. Like, I don't know enough about that, but I know that it can prevent from like click jacking and other types of attacks and stuff. Um, but there is other HTTP headers or HTTPS, whatever headers um, that you get access to like in um, Webflow Enterprise. Um, but there are ways to do those through Cloudflare and stuff like that if you wanted to. So that's just one that they give you access to. And, every plan i think so yeah and basically what shane is saying here is when your site grows and the traffic grows um you start getting more and more fake traffic which is then becomes a problem in your analytics and and elsewhere that's <laughs> one and two is um i think like the, the, the next thing that people usually don't get is that then people start doing weird stuff with your site as in they start using that content. They start there's crawl there's there's like scraping that starts happening. Like there's a lot of stuff that when you're only working with smaller sites, you don't get that. But when you work with bigger, there starts to be problems of uh, somebody just wrote a few lines of code and now look what happens with they are repurposing your site for something. So same as Google as a search engine it repurposes your site for their information. Other websites can do that as well. So I think that's also something that. Webflow does a good job on the basics, right? But then that bad stuff, you have to really have a developer for that, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, the, the <laughs> header stuff gets really complex. Um, I was actually, I'll just mention this. I was chatting with uh, Manuel in the Twitter DMs about this. Um, because on Webflow Enterprise, you get access to more of those um, headers. Um, they're just not, like, they come up. The reason I threw that in there is because they come up in audits regularly, right? So if you, especially on Webflow, it's missing like three things. One of them's like HSAT or no, I'm messing that one up, but there's one that's weird. Uh, and there's a few others that will like come up in audits. Oh, you're missing these. Um, but again, it's like, you don't have to worry about that until you're really moving tons of traffic. So, yeah. You actually don't need to worry about anything up until you're moving tons of traffic. More traffic <laughs> is more worrying. So that's yeah. why Lighthouse Core, like you say, you're going to die on the... By the way, Colleen is saying thanks and, and she, she got the context. That's why Lighthouse Core, both of us, we had this uh, idea and yours is like the moving force, you know, and I had this also a long time ago. Like, why are people concerned with it? This only matters in the end when you have two equally good sites and then one loads half a second faster, you know, at the end when you have like thousands of pages and it only starts mattering then. The problem is once you get into like, let's say a really big e-commerce store where they're trying to have a timer on there to buy now and they're doing all these things, they have a live chat popping up. There's so many tools at play there to make those. Those are really, really um, extensive experiences people are trying to put on. And those just don't come with good Lighthouse scores. Like the one example I shared was ramp.com, which is a awesome startup they have a great product um and their lighthouse I can you show it on your it. screen for us while you're just speaking uh it was a tweet yeah. but just like the, the the site that you're talking about oh ramp yeah let me do that um yeah so it's ramp um they're a like a, a b2b not a b2b they're just a business as, like, as you can see it took a moment to load <laughs> yeah 
Yeah, and I have literally pretty talking about that. Yeah, I mean, let's not run it because I just will. Uh, uh, yeah, well, I don't want to do that right now. But um, it, it, you know, in mobile, like their mobile, I think this was their mobile score. It was a performance of twenty three. Like it is red as can be, um, and their SEO is not even perfect as well. Like on the Lighthouse score, um, but but like they're an eight billion dollar startup. Like who cares? Like they have this tool right here. I'm sure they've got all kinds of stuff working right now. Like this is a scroller. So all this code is just going to slow your site down. You've got this one, more code, or unless that's a video, but I'm assuming that's probably code because yeah, there's text there. So it's just like, who cares? Like the Lighthouse score, the whole purpose of Lighthouse was for developers to have a, a, um, a fake testing environment. It's not a real world test, Lighthouse specifically. Some tools are. Lighthouse is not, it's throttled. So that's like the big thing. It's like people get like just married to these things and they're like, we must improve this. And it's like, no, maybe, but do you have any content? Like, do you have any, like, have you tried to keyword anything? So I'm going on a rant now. We're going to move on. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, I'm going to add last, last bit of this and we're going to move to that question you had about duplicates. And, and then just to add on this on top, I also work with projects that have Lighthouse course of 20 but it's shooting every month they're like increasing their profits by like 30 percent or whatever and it's growing like this for months and you know just because strategy beats lighthouse core every time like every yeah. time yeah. um and yes in the end if there's like a very directly identical site to yours with competition and a lot of and even strategy then in the end as a uh, as a last ranking factor google can pick lighthouse core as in Oh, you know, the site clearly loads better than the other one. Let's show this as a result. So that's like core, uh, core web vitals, right? That's what it is fundamentally. But yeah. there's so many other factors that matter so much more before Lighthouse Core that you don't even touch it before you become, you know, because for these guys, yes, when they have all of this and then they improve their Lighthouse Scores by 10 or 20, that's cool, yeah. right? Buy yeah. 10 or 20 from 20 Ooh. to 40. <laughs> <laughs> but still like then it... for for ramp.com i'm sure if they got that score up to like 40 or 50 maybe even higher like they might actually see a small increase right yeah. um but again they i think they somewhere in like the 500,000 um you know monthly visitors on their site so but like their content is massive they have a massive content structure there's clearly a a team working on all this and like i can't find their page with all their blogs they might not have one but um yeah they're they're going at it like they're full speed ahead so like the lighthouse score is just like whatever we'll get to it so and joshua is saying lighthouse score just became pride metrics to a lot of people i also think it became also as an offering of developers as like hey we do seo hence look 99 100 98 99 100 um when fundamentally i think that's not what SEO is like at its core. That's the last thing you're going to see because the SEO is just content and links, content and links. And if you don't get that part and you don't offer neither content nor links, it's whatever you're doing is just maybe helping, <laughs> but yeah. not actual SEO the way at least I see it, you know? Yeah. So, yeah, so continuing to the, to the, you want me to grab the duplicate question you had or just move to other stuff? Um, yeah, why don't you talk about Google? Okay. Yeah, go for so it. So my idea is like this. Um, Google is becoming better and better at not penalizing you, but just ignoring some stuff. Also, we have to remember one thing that Google reads your um, actual code. Um, yeah, see you, Joshua. See you, Josh. Appreciate so, you. Man. So thanks, man. So yeah, so Google is getting better and better, not actually penalizing you. Same they're doing now with backlinks, like uh, after especially last uh, link spam updates even more. And with each core update, which is now, by the way, rolling out, <laughs> hooray to everybody who sees spikes and hooray and set for everybody who sees downwards trajectories. I just checked one last night and this <laughs> client's not going to be happy. Um, they're, <laughs> they're losing stuff quick. So yeah, it's rolling yeah. out. And it's hitting so, people, and that's just the nature of this ever evolving game of SEO, and that's why it's hard to like. It just feels like this fire hose of I gotta learn this, gotta learn this, gotta learn, oh, figure this out. And um, that's why I'm like, just ignore the lighthouse. Like, okay, make it decent, but like, go into content, keyword stuff. Like, that's what actually moves the needle. So, 
yeah keep going yeah. sorry and i understand and for me it's yeah uh, like and also chat on the same not for me but like it, it structure it from the start like before you start designing certain designers and certain developers but before client like if you're a client and now cons watching us this second and considering to have a site start by going to somebody like us who can help you explain how the market works how the the sitemap should look according to your competition and a lot of other things and let them help you prepare the, the what you're going to build and then design comes and then wireframing and then developing and that's the part but that's also something that in ideal world again i just know that this is hard and almost impossible but when it's done right then we get these sites as we just showed like 20 lighthouse core who cares <laughs> a lot of revenue and a lot of salaries paid and a lot of investors happy you know yeah like the last I checked, they're an eight billion evaluation. Like they're not stopping anytime soon. The market they're in is so untapped, um, and they've got a, they've got a few competitors like Brex, um, Divi, Card. Like, yeah, it's an interesting market to watch, and, and they're built on Webflow. So it's just it's one of the sites I'm following just to just to see how things you know play out for them and stuff like that. And for so. duplicates, yes, you have to avoid duplicates. As, but duplicates is more means same content on different two URLs on your page. You have right to and. That. It's if more Google assumes that it repeats the pattern, it repeats itself as in the HTTPS and HTTP or W and no W, uh, WWW and no W versions have the same content, they will correct it and add canonicals on their own because Google is good at correcting code that you made mistakes on. Like understanding that, oh, they use two H1s and yeah, okay, cool, or whatever. Like that kind of stuff yeah. they can figure out because they run shitty sites for a living every day <laughs> they crawl <laughs> them for a living so they're good at it but if you i think duplicate is evolved from not having technically duplicate because crawlers were not sophisticated and you would get penalized for it as opposed now google doesn't penalize you uh so often and almost anywhere you see that but google it's no longer unless you get a manual action for being really really cheeky that's another whole story right but then you have to do intentionally push it right uh, or, yeah, sometimes can happen as well. But in theory, the way it works is uh, you want to be helpful. You want to do your best. And duplicate content is actually when two different pages, when two different slugs, so one static page and another static page, or one CMS item and another CMS item or whatever, has almost identical com content or identical content, God forbid. That's actual Which duplicate. Yeah, but but again, we don't. I don't want to go too far into that because it is. You are allowed to have some. Like it's natural to have some, right? Yes. You are a website. You are. You have some sort of theme or whatever you're doing. Yes. Like you're going to have content that's very similar across pages. That's normal. Um, it's like when you're copying and pasting for who knows what reason. Trying. Yeah. Again, it's like like he's cheeky is your word. But like if you were if you were making six of the same pages to try to rank for that keyword, that's what you're going to get penalized for. Um, yeah, and it's normal to have, per by the way, which Webflow is really, really good at, honestly. Uh, other platforms are a bit worse at this. Um, but because when you think about it, like your nav bar and your footer is duplicate content. Right. Yeah. It's just, yes. And then if you have some other things, for example, your main CTA is a section with a follow us or join our newsletter or whatever, it's, I can't duplicate content, right? The yeah. problem starts when it's only that. <laughs> because <laughs> yeah. it's normal as you say like teams are your website does what it does it doesn't do plumbing on a side so of course you're talking about one thing of course you're repeating yourself and of course a lot of things are happening so uh that's why local seo works with just changing location for a page and adding a few extra location specific things and 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 adding a little bit but basically leaving 80 percent of the content the same and just now ranking for the same keyword in a different city or whatever right yeah i mean you can do that um they're they're definitely starting to penalize for that kind of stuff yeah but that... that's like always cats chasing the mouse and mouse <laughs> they're just everybody's understand what's happening but at the same time when it's punished then oh then we look for a new loophole well, I'll tell you this. There was an agency I saw that back in September when they rolled out that update, whichever one it was, they had throughout their agency, they had 20,000 pages de-indexed because of that update. So 
I mean, you could do what you want. You could try to play the system, but um, sometimes you'll lose. <laughs> no, you have to、um, be smart about it. Like you, I know people that that do that for renting sites. So they just make、uh, sites for local stuff,、uh, make、mm-hmm. URL based sites. So they they don't do it on the flow. They do it on WordPress. Splits.、Mm-hmm. Uh, that site, they use like a plugin that splits the same site into different domains, and then just makes pages for with the same.、Uh, let's take it like I don't know, plumbing something like that, plumbing some city, and just optimize page for that. And when they start ranking, they just find somebody to sell the phone number and address to. That's it.、Mm-hmm. On a、yeah. monthly basis, all your leads, man, lead generation business, <laughs>、yeah. was there for a while, will remain. <laughs> Everybody's gonna <laughs> buy your leads, you know. Anyways,、yeah. not going on a tangent. Coming back to step number four. Definitely a tangent, but we'll come back.、Um, super simple. Flip this switch. That's literally all you have to do.、Um, this, is, I mean, the whole purpose of your staging domain, right, is, is、um, that you can test stuff, that you can run stuff. Like you, you don't want clients landing on this because this starts to rank as high as your main domain.、Um, I mean, it just depends if you care or not. But for me and If you want to get into Webflow's expert program, which a ton of people just did, you know, the last few days,、um, this is like essential on every project. So, super simple to do. Pro well, tip on this would be do that before you start building one. Yeah. And if you can, if you can, and then two is、uh, I had a build cool story where we were using because that site was getting like thousands of traffic a day. Uh, we were using like a staging secondary domain as a new subdomain, sorry, as a new dot domain dot com or whatever、mm-hmm. for for just testing.、Um, and there's like a lot of team involved, so it was kind of the way we call. And it was the project took longer than we expected, like always.、Mm-hmm. And in the end, Google just indexed the whole thing. <laughs> it's not sitemap is not submitted. It's because Google. Just、it's, because you say no follow doesn't mean that it's not gonna follow. <laughs> yeah, and like you said, do this before you even start that the first publish. Make sure this is done、um, because it will find this stuff. Like it, Google's out there looking, all the search engines are out there searching around. And if it gets indexed first thing, and then you launch this site, and then three months down the line you make all these changes, and they're on the staging domain only clients. Like people might still find that site. So because once it gets indexed, it's gonna stay out there for some amount of time before it. Unless they they index as they found the original and assign this version a canonical, which is doesn't happen that fast as you would think because it would you would think that、yeah. it's obvious for Google, but even with all that sophisticated stuff, it's not. All right,、yeah. next thing, step five. So, if you notice, this is a FinSuite attribute. This is a FinSuite attribute that just copied this text right there. So, just talking a little bit about this, but um. Yeah, this is super important. Like when Google comes to your site, they look for this.、Um, they're actively seeing. Okay, if you have a file, what should we respect anything in here? Not every search engine, not every search engine will respect what's in this.、Um, but as a general rule of thumb, have this very basic one,、um, and then if you want any other pages in there, feel free to just add them.、Um, but you would want disallow. So if you don't disallow CMS collections that don't have designs. Yes, but it's not perfect. It is. It it's is not、awesome. everything, but that's one of the things for. Yeah,、me. it's one of the workarounds until Step- until、yeah. Webflow gives a sitemap control. Yeah, I'm praying. I ask. Please, Webflow, give us sitemap. Yeah, but really, like I hold manual sitemaps on so many Webflow builds now, and I'm the one responsible for. If there's any change, I have to be always aware of what's happening, and there's teams working on it, not just me alone. Trust me, please, Vapo, give it to us. Like, just because it's annoying. Of,、uh, yeah. And also, if you're a designer, if you designed a CMS collection and it doesn't have a design, basically, you click on on the CMS collection template page and it's white. Usually, your sitemap architecture is not great. I'm not saying there aren't instances where it's mandatory, especially for development parts. <laughs> like you can develop cool stuff with it, right? As an editor, but I rarely like in ninety percent of cases I find sitemap mistakes as opposed of、uh, just you know really really was needed and actually that's the only workaround you know there's no other way to do the same thing. What do you think about that? Yeah, I mean, 
I didn't follow everything there, but yeah, if we just had control over this, if we could just literally click a button or whatever, just pull out the, you know, the referencing collections that have nothing on it, right? Like that, that alone would be huge. Um, and our then, draft collections, another, like we can draft side pages. If you can draft a correction as in it's not published. So what we're adding and we're using it in the back end. we're using the CMS as a connective tissue between, let's say two different CMSs, right? For some reason or whatever, but we can yeah. draft the template as in all the pages within the CMS is not actually published and they're not live. They're 404s. Again, great way. So these two features would solve so many problems that I have every day. <laughs> yeah. I actually saw someone was showing me a site and it didn't have this turned on. It just had like, you know, six pages and the site had like 15, 20 pages, but they weren't in the site map. So like you're hurting, right? Even trying to just rank, you're hurting it so much. Um, so yeah, this is a huge, it's a really, really nice feature, right? If you're pumping out, you know, five, six, seven blogs a week or some crazy number, you can't keep up with that sitemap. I mean, you do, but it's an, it's so hard, manually speaking, so. Hey, Felix. Oh, nice to join. Nice for you to join us live. Uh, and I'm really glad you're we'll be watching this uh, anytime. If you have any questions, because now we're here live, drop them because as you saw probably in the in the rewatches, we really go on a tangent if somebody distracts us <laughs> with a question. <laughs> Yeah, that's all right. Um, um, so yeah, step six. Super simple. I mean, this is going to come from your um, your Google Search Console. It's going to give you a verification code. This is not your analytics. That might be the next step. Uh, it's somewhere down there. Um, this maybe wasn't in the most logical order. It's just in the order I went through. Actually, no, this is, does, does have logic. It does go through the tabs in the back end of Webflow. That's why I did it this way. So... Um, anyways, yeah, literally just dropped it in there. Super simple. Um, there is multiple ways to verify with Google Search Console, but you really just need one. Um, so that will do that for you. Um, and then your canonical, this is huge. Um, putting this in there properly will populate all your canonicals throughout your site for you. Um, sometimes there's issues with collection pages. I've found that you just, you just manually reference them or um, you put real canonical on the page, stuff like that. But Again, this is just basics. Put this in there. It will do work wonders for you. Um, but it needs to match your default domain, which is up here. Um, that's how I do it. I know me and you've had some discussion off stream about that, but we'll leave it at that for now. Yeah, it's uh, canonical. Is another, it's simple, but also you have to understand why you're doing it. Um, and if canonical is a word that you don't understand and now watching this, just Google it start looking at it because it's you have to get why and what we're doing because there's a lot of now we could give some advice that is not actually advice because it depends on the bill right if you have a i don't know if you have a oh god forbid like a multi-language site like we just spoke before a stream about we got not actually we know that it's not populating correctly but we also know that google will still uh, work like five versions translated into different languages is better with improper technical SEO than no versions and just that, you know, hmm. but all right. So Felix has a, yeah, question. has a, something to say and, and we're just going to do this for a moment. So talk a lot of these empty CMS template pages. Do you advise always have content there? Isn't it always better to have empty rather than low content? <laughs> you want to start because I can go here for the rest of what's left. <laughs> well, an FAQ page, what your page is just, oh no, that would probably be a pretty poor user experience. That second question. Um, hmm, okay. I mean, on the forefront, when you're making collections in Webflow and you're trying to reference for categories, like let's say for a blog, you have four categories that you have to make. Um, I mean, there's probably some other way to do this, but you make that other collection with those four categories. And now you have URLs that are your domain.com slash blog slash blank category. And there's never content on that page. So, I mean, the workarounds I do right now is you block it in robots.txt. Um, and then if it's a site, you can manage the site map. You, you manually manage the site map and you just pull it out. That helps a lot too. Um, but yeah, maybe spell out the 
well, I guess you kind of spell it out here, but the whole content thing. Um, I, I mean, yeah, you want to make sure people aren't getting to these these random empty collections. That's at the end of the day, that's what matters. So, if you don't have it like linked anywhere in your site, you block it in robots.txt and it lives in your site map. The chances of them finding them are pretty low um, because Google and you put a D index, um, put a no index tag on the page. Google's probably going to recognize, okay, they don't want to show this. People aren't going to find them. But yeah, what do you want to say on this one, Aiva? <sighs> okay, so I will gonna address the question and answer. This is very common, actually, a very good idea for Felix. Um, that's a common thing that happens, right? You wanna just add questions and answers, a Q and A, and you use this as a component somewhere on a site and probably use it in the multiple spaces. You know what I usually do? I have two or three versions of answers. So there's like the short one that we use, for example, on the home page as one one sentence. We have the longer one that we maybe use in the pricing page under the table. Um, and we might even have uh, like a third one, which is a longer and sometimes maybe even includes a video if you can do it, or just a longer one that explains kind of that whole shebang if you want to land on it. Don't forget that if you create a single question and answer page, uh, it's, 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 it would get indexed. So that's why if users would Google on Google your brand name and ask a question, they would land on that page. So the, the thing is like a lot of design and development starts from the this kind of assumption that users will start from the homepage and they will be guided through the experience from the homepage. And SEOs think the opposite. They think the bottom of the tentacles, that's where they're gonna start. So it's not necessarily great user experience but i think if you have crawling budget for it and you this is a small site and why not but you have to understand that certain amount of content has to be there and maybe yes you're right sometimes it's not the right call but websites are never done you always have to add more and grow add more and grow um so yeah so it depends like on the on the use case like what do you think about this like do you mm. agree with me or you would not <clears throat> say nah so I, I i guess i think i misunderstood the question so i think what he's asking is you're making an faq page and all the info is coming from a cms collection to and easily you have populate a page. yeah yeah you have so, a page design for a single question or single answer yeah i i forgot about that so it's tough you make a lot of random URLs. Um, I'd have to look. I have to look into that more. A lot of FAQs, like I just, I just build static FAQs um, personally, so um, you don't have to think about component. it too much. You can make a component, man, and then yeah, you can, and you know, you can adapt them on different pages, like right. Because when you create, you have to understand that when you make a CMS collection, you made a bunch of URLs now. <laughs> And, and I think every URL has to have a solve a problem online. Because when you build sites, you have to understand that every URL you make, every slug you produce, has to match specific problems somebody's having. Like specific right. users, like, right? So yeah. if you make FAQs, and this is a question people search, then maybe your client now doesn't need a a knowledge base or a, or a documentation or something. And then you spin that into the site. Or if it's external, then, then just why would you bother adding FAQs here? Like, you know, but yeah, static page chains idea with static FAQs also is a, you can, I know that CMS are faster, right? But that just because you can use CMS doesn't mean you have to. Well, so this is really a question of budget company size in my eyes, because you can use Airtable and WhaleSync, or you can use Xano and WhaleSync, or um, I think you can... Did I just see something about Google Sheets too now? Maybe, I don't know. Regardless, there's other ways to do, to build a CMS, right? A manual CMS, especially, uh, or it would be more manual, if you will. There's also tons of room for Webflow to grow in this area because CMS is simply just a database. At the end of the day, it's a database you're inputting data into that's getting pulled dynamically to the page, right? So there's room for them to grow in this of, can we just get CMS that doesn't create URLs. Like we don't need pages. We just need the yeah. database part. That's why right? I'm asking. I'm publish. You know, like yeah. you unpublish static page. I'm publish a CMS collection template, and oh, that just fearsome. tells. Yeah. That's what it tells that CMS in the backend exists, but there's yeah. no URLs, no content, uh, no content is pushed 
to their specific one page per URL. Because now the way they connected it, one spring sheet line means one slug. We just want to disconnect that. I can yeah. have more spreadsheet lines and I don't need a slug for each one of those. As in, if we're thinking that <laughs> yeah. one spreadsheet line is a, is, a, is a CMS collection item, right? Not, not a field. So in this, that's... you know, this is maybe somewhere where someone like uh, an agency like FinSuite could develop within their plugin. <coughs> someone else, I couldn't hear. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, is there a way to inject data into the CMS that then in the background doesn't publish it and still gives us the database? I'm sure there's got to be a way. Um, maybe we could talk to WebBay about building something like that, or, or you know, hey, FinSuite, can you guys, you know, give us this feature, um, or Webflow, you know, any any three, we'll take we'll take uh, any options we have. Um, but yeah, there is. But here's the the upside of Webflow is always this: no longer are we reaching out to a dev team from the marketing team to publish a FAQ change or a knowledge base like. That is just ridiculous. That amount of uh, work that it would take in the past for certain, like we're talking maybe enterprise or larger companies. Um, so we're getting the benefit of being able to do these really quick with like literally a single freelancer can manage a whole massive site for a company. So we have to look at that as well. Um, and these extra URLs, they're not going to damage your SEO significantly in any way. Um, maybe if you had you know massive amounts, that'd be a problem. But there's other ways to mitigate it. The no index, the robots.txt. Um, and then man if you just manage the sitemap, that's another option as well. So um, yeah, yeah, Webflow, come on. Yeah, no, thanks for jumping in, Felix. It was, that was good stuff. I, I just tweeted that at everybody, so yeah. <laughs> So let's, um, I'm going to breeze through since we're still only on step 11. Um, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. We were continuing. <laughs> well, we got, we got yeah. off there, but hey, that was good. That was good. So that's, that's a good subject. And it's also like, uh, to finish this topic, that's also something nobody knows an answer because if a new feature comes out, it all changes. If a new feature yeah. doesn't come out, we have to play with workarounds. Uh, my job is to play with workarounds. Shane's job is to play with workarounds. Uh, and also we're coming up with this best practices as we go, right? We do, you guys that develop, do designers do the same. And especially with content and SEO, there's still not enough practices of agencies running these sites or, or teams running these sites to know what's best, you know, what's the best way and yeah. All right, continue. Step number seven. All right, so step number seven. Stop calling the API from Google Fonts. It's ridiculous. Um, if I'm not mistaken, if I'm not mistaken, it happens on every page load. It has to call that API like super fast. So um, it's a real small bump in improvement, but it is a speed improvement. So if you want to, you know, fix your lighthouse scores, <laughs> um, do this. Uh, this will help. Um, but just upload the fonts. Normally, you're uploading fonts anyways, like if you're using custom fonts and stuff like that. Um, but literally just... Now, now keep in mind, if you go from the API to an installed font, you will have to go through at least your style guide to make sure that it's now sending that new font because I did this once to your project and it... Um, what had happened? It reset to like the system UI or some basic font. So you have to actually go through and say, nope, pull the new font, pull the new font. So... Just keep that in mind. Um, integrations, here we go. Google Analytics, super simple. Drop that in there. Remember, don't put the GTAG code on your site and do this. You'll then you'll be pulling analytics twice, more than likely. Um, well, only do one or the other, but this is the simple one. So what's that? Don't add this to global head, right? And here or you will get double analytics, right? That's the where, are you, where are you typing? So here, so you can tweet this. Uh, wait one sec, you can just screenshot it now and tweet it, you know? <laughs> <laughs> is, this the, is this the state? I would have to fix it. Like that's the statement, right? Don't because if you add analytics. the GT GT here and you add also the the, the, the custom code and the custom code yeah. section as in a global head, right? Then mm -hmm. it's doing that twice. That's your advice. 
Yeah, and Google's probably gonna honestly, they're probably working on a way to detect that and then to stop. But but it does warn you in Google Analytics when you're setting up an account. Hey, only use one of these methods, or you might have false analytics. So you'll be like, "Ooh, we're getting a hundred thousand when it's like fifty, <laughs> or or a hundred when it's like fifty. Yeah, um, analytics <laughs> is something you have to have people running it that know what they're doing and they can check stuff because it's really too easy to mess up there, like with all the tags and and you can add Google uh, like tag stuff and like if you really go just you know don't know what you're doing that data can be invaluable eventually yeah and uh colin made a good point um well she said really i didn't know it's calling every page i think i could be wrong in this i'm willing to be wrong let's check with WebBay or somebody um is it calling on every page regardless i've seen small speed improvements um from pulling this out because it is an api it is calling out and there is potential and I thought of this actually last night as preparing, there is potential for that API to go down for temporary, like temporarily. And your site is now just going to pull um, just default, whatever the browser says, surf up this font. So that's just something to keep in mind for like user experience. Um, but so I, what are you asking the bait? If, if, uh, if the... Does the Google fonts API call on every page load or is it for the, like once you land on the site, is it now surfacing what you need? Does Google Fonts API make a call on every what? Every page load. All right. I'm tweeting this at him. All right. We're going to have some uh, tweets after this uh, stream. This yeah. is new. <laughs> Thanks, Colleen, for spawning this. So, yeah. So, coming back to um, step number nine. Yeah. This is super simple. Add alt text to um, all your images. Uh, or make them, if they're SVGs, make them decorative only, then you don't need all text. Um, and if you actually, speaking of WebBay, um, if you want to do this faster, he does have a Chrome extension that will fill in um, all the all text with a little click of a button. So it uses AI to write it. And it's pretty good. I don't know what a API he's calling from or what tool he's using, but it's pretty cool. Um, so yeah, I'm confused why. I think... This may be the wrong image. We may have to fix that. <laughs> um, there may be an issue on the step. I forget. But maybe it was coming from the integrations over to there. So anyways, um, step 10, prefetch links. I go on sites a lot just to check for this. And I'm like, hey, how quickly does the next page load? And you can actually, there's a very noticeable difference if they're not set to prefetch. Um, that it just takes, you click and it just takes a good second to load. Um, can you explain rather than, to the audience what does that do? So we yeah. know, because this is like a new setting, no, not new, new, but more of a like, this is not something that a lot of people I think focus on. And, uh, but if you don't know what it is, then what does it do when you change it to, to prefetch? Yeah. So there's the initial page load once you go to it and any link on that page that's set to prefetch will then load after that. And I don't know how that works from a developer side of things. Um, but I know that user experience is in like massively increased. I mean, you can just, there are sites that I've done this on and been on, you can just click through pages like crazy, the links on like the nav and they'll just load, load, load like super fast. Um, the only like disclaimer on this would be, you know, if you have a big blog page with tons of blogs or some other page with tons of um, links on it, like, I mean, really any page with a nav and footer could be a lot of links. Just be careful, like you might not want to set this on every single link, otherwise tons of info will be loading after that initial load. So that's just something to keep in mind. Um, but it makes Webflow sites super, super fast from page to page, so. Yeah, and especially if it's assumed behavior that people will click on it. Like if it's, a, you're just linking for, in a blog for a source that uh, might or not, most people will not click, but you're just using it for SEO, then don't do it. <laughs> Yeah, but if this is something that people oh check our offer, <laughs> add that to the offer. Just yeah, you know. yeah, and like social links, like I don't want people to leave my site, but if they want to check out the social links, they can. So like I don't want those to be prefetched personally. That's my take on this. But um, so and step eleven this is the last step right now. Um, so page settings, open graph. Um, I actually was researching this last night. Open Graph is a protocol Facebook made. It's actually like a whole schema protocol 
that they created. Yeah. Didn't realize that, to be honest, because um, it's not very widely yeah. used or accepted. But then, um, it, uh, but then it also got ad adopted by most social media networks and 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 not only WhatsApps because WhatsApp is basically Facebook, right? But also like Slacks of the world because just after you create this prop call, it's for everybody to use, right? Yeah, so, okay, I guess I should say it is used for a lot of things, but, like, you really don't notice it. It just kind of goes, it's kind of under the rug. Um, like, when you share links and it's pulling that image into any platform, that is the, it's normally the open graph. Um, I know, it, I think it can pull favicon sometimes, but it's generally the open graph because it's a protocol. Um, and, yeah, like, if you, like, paste a link into iMessage or WhatsApp or Slack, stuff like that, yeah. It's normally this open graph image. So it's important to have, um, there's some theories around like the way it works and like using like a lot of these and stuff like that. But overall, I think it's pretty straightforward. Just put an image in there and uh, yeah, you can pull the links of your image that are in your assets panel. Um, if you just go to the assets panel and you'll be able to get the link for that URL, so. And if it's yeah. a CMS, you can select a an image from one of the fields that's that yeah do that because otherwise people will uh when they share for example if you don't set the image there's not going to be an image so it's it's you know like the, i think best example for those who don't understand what this means if, if you don't understand and when you share a youtube link with somebody right uh mm -hmm. you will see the thumbnail the title and a short description this is what it is mm -hmm. like when you set that you yes. set this information for the page. Maybe in some scenarios, it makes sense to make them custom, but if your meta titles and descriptions are written on point and they explain what the page is about, you probably always just check mark and that's that. Yeah. All right. Uh, we had a, like a Figma board going on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we totally. So we're coming back to the message of our sponsor and uh, our sponsor today by Bob's <laughs> board is not SEO <laughs> for I those like who are, yeah, well, I mean, yeah, if you're selling SEO and you just do a lighthouse core, don't sell SEO, please, please just, you know, it's, it's, it's bad. All right. Felix has a question. Yeah. Uh, so to our sponsor, lighthouse core is not SEO. <laughs> So open graph settings. If you fill all the available natively on Webflow, href will still tell you some OG tags are missing, like the URL or type. Is this important? Oh. I'm assuming you're saying hreps or just, oh yeah. Yeah, okay. hreps the tool. Um, you know what? Uh, I think what's going on there, let me give me one second on this. I had to link to the protocol. Where did it go? Did you pull? Okay. Um, I think what's going on is the protocol itself. So open graph, because I don't see these. I'm 99.99% sure I don't see these issues like in SEMrush or other tools. I don't really use HREFs personally. Um, I think what's happening is the open graph protocol has, <clears throat> it's not just an image. It's actually a lot of different things. I think URL and stuff is one of them. And it's yeah. missing because it's just simply not needed. So let me just pull this up real quick. Um, and again, I'm not I'm super just, familiar with this protocol. I'm just going to remove this from the stream and you can share and we can chat about it. Yeah, so there's four tags, which is like slug, title, description, and image. There's mm -hmm. the main four ones. There might be more actually because you know how it goes with, with semantics. It's like, like the same with schema markup, uh, like with structured data. Google says they understand like 30-ish, but there's like so many, there's like thousands. Uh, and especially subtypes, there's like thousands of subtypes that you can spe specify even further what it is. Um, so same kind of could be here. I don't know about that part, but I know for sure there's four main. So yeah, anyways, sharing your screen, Shane. Uh, am I? Should I? No, you're not. You oh. should do the present new again, which is... Uh, I had to add custom code in the head section for each page. I'm happy. Okay. I would love to know more about that. I'm curious now. Um, I don't know if I've run into that specifically. Um, Honestly, never had issues with getting 
like you know health scores because we're talking here health scores right so clients come to you with that spreadsheet that that it's just literally maybe their seo agency did this for them maybe they did it themselves like hrefs just literally popped a lot of errors right uh, yeah. and, and some of them are errors read, which lowers the health score. If you fix all the errors, then at least it's, um, it's, if you fix, let me finish here and we can jump to your idea. So if you fix all the errors, then it's 100 and everybody's happy, but there's also a lot of other stuff. Like, for example, if you don't have all text that all tags, that doesn't mean that it's not 100 and stuff like that. So there's like, so SEO agency drops your clients that checklist. <laughs> And that client, if they don't understand what it is, they will come to you and maybe say, hey, and that's how custom code in the head section happens. Back to Shane. So, well, a few things. Um, it's possible, Felix, but I do want to look into this more. I'm just curious um, now. What I'm, what I'm interested, though, you said it was missing the URL, which is weird because you would, I'm assuming you're putting the URL of the image right here, right? No, 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 no. the URL of the page. One of the fourth draft tag that is not here on this table that you're showing, it's the slug itself. But that's obvious, man. The slug is obvious. That flow has to pull the slug. So I'm assuming, unless Felix correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm assuming that they found an issue where somehow crawler doesn't find the fourth, uh, the, the fourth component of open graph, which is the slug itself. Because when you share a link, you share four parameters. You share the slug, as in where you're gonna go. Oh. You share the title, the description, and the image. And the, he's probably saying yes. So he's saying that that the URL is missing, but you don't have a feel for that. It's automatically pulled from that. So I don't, <laughs> I don't know. And that's actually interesting. You guys should chat about this offline and turn this into some sort of trailer. So it's awesome, man. Okay. Yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, here too, like what I tell people like a hundred million times a day is look. These audit crawlers, Google Search Console, all these errors that pop up, you have to interpret them. That's in Google's co Google Search Console's documentation. Like the, these are all up for interpretation. They're not always an issue. Um, that's why in these audit tools, you can actually say, ignore this from now on. So the next audit actually shows a better score, like you were saying. So there's a lot of that as well. Um, I did pull up like, look at this beautiful website that Facebook made from who knows when, like their open yeah. graph protocol. Um, I was reading through this a little bit. I need to read through it more, but um, yeah, it's just interesting. I don't want to go to um, schema.org. We've never been there. That's a fun site. <laughs> oh, it's beautiful. Um, it's it's beautiful. amazing. That's red color. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, that is a beautiful 90s red. I mean, it's just horrible. No, schema is go to schema.org because yours is now. Come on, like it's just gonna be 2010 for sure. Schema.org is teen, not 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 even 2005. It says here. Uh, no, it doesn't. Wait, let me Google that for it. Schema. Have there uh, there. Uh, Colleen, please. what's this tool? You said there's a tool just for OG settings. Uh, wait, when when was org introduced June 2011. Right? This. So, oh, we want to talk about it. that. I have ideas about that. So, is there a tool checking your OG set? Oh, OG, not schema. Sorry, my bad. Yeah, that's another story. Uh, well, yeah, there's so um. Oh, she might be talking about um. Hmm. Is it a uh, SEO tool checker.com? There's a really cool one. Um, so yeah, I would anyway. say there's always a tool whenever you don't <laughs> know anything and I use those, all those tools. I have a lot of them and also just, uh, Colleen, just get, uh, SEO minion. Look, I can, sh I can't, can I can't share. Wait, I'm going to drop. <sighs> I want to share this. So, all right. So it's, there is a plugin for Chrome called SEO minion. Uh, and I can just drop it in here, a screenshot. So if I'm on a website, let's see this one. Uh, I can show you the way. Uh, so yeah, 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 yeah. One sec, sorry guys. Did she put, she might have put a link, but it doesn't come through to our side, does it? I can't uh, see YouTube live right now. 
I'm not sure what she's talking about. There should be a link, but Google me is suppressing the link. So anyways, I'm going to enter in the comment and I'm going to drop into the Figma board and we're looking. So, um, so this is a free tool that basically does almost everything that, that Sam flow does, right? Almost everything and other oh, yeah. stuff. There's always a checker for that. There's always a something, something checker, Google that. And there's always going to be a few that, that will do that. For example, broken link checker. Just type it in, type your URL, it's going to crawl and it's going to drop. Hey, this is, you know, whenever there's always an issue. But with this, for sure, I use it all the time to check if the open graph, uh, if for, so I use always like uh, SEO minion to check if open graph is set for the thing. So, uh, and it shows if it's not set. So here's an example, right? This is what we're now using the, uh, the page on. And it also shows other things. So. Uh, so to answer Colleen's question, um, is there a tool? Yes, there's SEO Minion uh, as your Chrome extension, and then everything else you can, you know, find usually a crawler for it. Cool. Oh, and the one you shared. Okay, we can show that as well, actually. I know what you're talking about. Then another thing. Oh, yeah, I shared that uh, on our end. Um, that might have been what she was talking about. But this is a really, really helpful website. Too. So this website, technicalseo.com, I also use it a lot. Yeah. Um, anybody who wants to learn any, uh, so is there a tool for not OG, but for anything? There's usually, they if and they also rank in most scenarios, like position one, two, three, four, whatever. They're usually there, right? Yeah, and um, go to, um, I think they're, on the left side, click on the SERP simulator. Uh, left side, left side. Where is it? It's in the. It's in the. Um, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Sidebar. Yeah, Surf so you can like type up stuff, and it will tell you. You know, it will basically give you an idea of is that too long and stuff like that. So that's kind of cool. Yeah, I use a letter for this, but same same idea, and it's also yeah. gonna show some schema. For example, you can see if. If I think you can see here if it's full of schema, right? Because rating is oh, a yeah. schema and it, it's generated based on, on, on structured data you implemented. So, um, yeah. and another thing is so with these tools, there's a lot of cool stuff. Uh, but one of the things you can do here, of course, is also this thing. So you can just select, by the way, Google has its own, which is uh, Google structured data. Um, so after you read the documentation, which is part of the technical as well, you would also go to the helper and you can just select your URL and it's going to pull um, pull something like that, right? So you would go here uh, and it would just allow you to assign things and create structured data. So now we're making article structured data, right? And uh, yeah, and then you can just add missing text. So for example, set that this is like, the title or stuff like that. And then it's going to generate the code and you can paste it in back in the head. And, and that's how one way. And this is another way, for example, things like, this is cool for things like, for example, organization, and you just add stuff here and you're going to just pull organization uh, markup that you're going to add to the homepage. By the way, if you guys adding organization data uh, schema to sites, add it to one page. That's it. That's enough. Like you don't need to add it to the, to the more, to the main, um, to the to the global head, just homepage or or about us or whatever, which is also sometimes called not organization, but the logo. Uh, yeah. So sorry, going on a tangent, coming back. <laughs> Wait, you were not seeing what I was showing? No, we were seeing that. What do you mean? Oh, uh, what? No, you were. That it's. Is it? Uh, I was seeing. Yeah. What you were seeing. Yeah, okay, cool. My bad. Because uh, I, <laughs> I thought it's your screen. God, shocked. No, there's there's a lot in the back end that, yeah, I get that. Um, so, cool. yeah. Yeah, let's um let's round this up. Um, yeah, I think it's enough for today. So, Lighthouse Core is not SEO. Uh, coming to neighborhoods near you soon, this summer as well. <laughs> and other stuff. I might launch a campaign. If someone, if an investor wants to fund a, a million dollar uh, campaign, we'll, we'll do it. Like uh, Google might not like us for that, but well, it's a joke. I mean, joke. Google knows that. Yeah, like, like they, again, they Lighthouse was a developer-first tool, <laughs> and it's become this SEO tool out of nowhere for some reason. 
yeah, and we had these, we, by the way, for those thinking, we're not prepared here and just blabbering. We actually had a lot of prepared stuff uh, and maybe we touched most of it. Uh, Thank you, Colleen. Appreciate you. Appreciate the shout out this morning and all the other stuff you threw out. Yeah, thanks everybody. Thanks, Colleen. Thanks, Felix. Thanks, whoever who's here. Ah, oh, Josh was here as well, and Star and everybody. Thanks a lot for joining today. Um, it was awesome. Um, I don't know if we actually talked about a lot about technical, but basics were there. Because <laughs> then, to finish it off, if I would need to add something, and then Shane, Shane can can elaborate. Technical is usually developer's job. Like. <laughs> No, that's really I was funny. laughing at the comment more so, but it is. Yeah. And, and that's the thing is like, that's where, um, you know, the whole, you know, okay. If you look at job postings, right. A lot of times it's like the, the people that are getting hired for SEO jobs, at least in a little bit of searching I've just done, like, or the stuff that comes across LinkedIn because it matches my profile, whatever, like it is content, you know, because that is like one brain piece of it. Um, and generally those other technical things are going to be handed off to the dev team, you know, in a, in an organization set up. So yeah, there's, um, there's a lot, everything crosses lines, right? Conversion rate optimization is technically this made up thing to some people, right? There's a lot of opinions around that, but like, then you get into UX and UI and then you get into design. But then if you go the other way, it's like, oh, well, we have to develop this or like, there's just, it's this facet it becomes a part of SEO because actually we were talking, we were talking about this off stream. This was an interesting point and I made a tweet. I might just retweet this cause it's not getting lots of traction. Um, but the, the whole idea of click throughs, like, or if you get clicks on a page, right? Okay. That matters. Right. But then you have to convert them on the page and then you like copy comes into play and, um, button placement and CTAs and all this stuff. Um, so CTRs are only so good if your CTAs are good, you know, get into all these anagrams or whatever they call these things. Um, but uh, abbreviations. <laughs> Anyways, we're going on another tangent here. Um, that will be the next time we, uh, we're we back. We'll talk about yeah. click-throughs. Yeah. Yeah. Next time we're going to talk about, I don't know, anything. Like, guys, let us know in comments, especially if you're now here live or you're watching later. Just leave a comment or tweet at us like what you want to talk about us because we're gonna have these. Oh, and I'm gonna do the, the the pitch. So we have three next live streams, guests coming in. Uh, so check out the channel to see what's happening. Uh, one of the three is still not published it published because we're because uh, we're still working on a title and, and what we can talk about and what we can. So that's gonna be a really interesting one. Uh, but then two of them are ready. So next three guests are already lined up. They're ready to go. Um, both of them got a meme thumbnail. So check those out. I'm not gonna <laughs> spoil for you the what, but uh, this is gonna be cool. And next week we're talking about um conversion rate actually ctr we're actually talking next week about how to convert more traffic because that's another yeah. i would say that's not seo seo is like get people through the door but then that's okay. the seo you're talking about as in content seo right understand how site map works understand how information architecture works understand how knowledge graph works because that becomes when sites grow from small to from tiny to small hits 100 and then you have these open graph issues starting to show up but then when you have like a thousand you actually have open graph issues how that you can analyze a lot of things so that's what seo means for people that you know pitch seo to you but there's like so many branches of it like so many yeah. stuff and i don't do i don't know maybe 70 percent of it <laughs> like just don't do yeah. because i know that there are people better than me and hey i can get them on board like i can ask shane about <laughs> How do yesterday I got a question for you that is like I, I could start googling real deep, but maybe you know, and it's gonna save me like two hours because I know this is not simple. Like just <laughs> yeah, and even that I won't I won't even mention that question. But even that's something I'm like that's a little bit above my head. Like it's more of a developer. Yeah. Like so, I, yeah, we'll talk about that at the DM. <laughs> but, um, yeah, like that is a but that's a question that I have to answer. To high level part. thing. Yeah. <laughs> you have to like hey. And I advised already them on what, because I know the specs of that question, but I don't know yeah. how do we check that. <laughs> yeah, 
And maybe, you know, maybe that's something down the line we, we get a collaborative episode going with someone. Because that, that, actually, that will come up a lot more based on where Webflow and the community as a whole, I won't say what, is headed. That specific question is actually going to be uh, coming up a lot more, um, I see, personally. Um, and one other thing, I should, but, well, I don't know when our next stream will be. We don't have that plan, but... I'm getting more photos next month. Like I'm actually going into a studio, doing some shoots. Um, I because I, I like my photos, but I want make some better, memes. So. Hey, make some some random stuff. Like ask them to have a few because when I, I will be having you on the streams a lot, <laughs> so yeah. I need those. You know, <laughs> some. Memes. I'm gonna try to get some banger ones that really. Fit <laughs> yeah, the and then make the official ones and just, stuff. But <laughs> just something stupid and yeah. 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 All right, guys. Thanks, everybody, for being with us. Thanks for everybody watching. We're not going to blabber uh, more than now. Um, this is awesome. Having Shane here is awesome. He's doing his thing. I really love that there's... When I started this, there was uh, not a lot of... Yes, yes. There was <laughs> not a lot of clout in the industry on this topic. But now I love that there are starting to show up people with uh, more specializations. Uh, and that's... I hope this is going to happen, you know. And... Uh, we want a surprise face. <laughs> I saw, uh -huh. I saw, like, I mean, if everybody's using it, then it doesn't work anymore. <laughs> it's so stupid. And I've talked to people about this. This is like YouTube SEO, actually. Thumbnails yeah. matter so much. Yeah. And you can literally look at stats. If you don't have the dumb look here, that, like, it doesn't do well. It does far worse. And it's, it's so dumb, but it's just, the cringe yeah. you have to play into if you want to have decent content on YouTube. Next month, around the middle, like the second stream of next month, we're going to have Uras here from Pro Ninja and check the thumbnail I made for him. <laughs> like it's, I don't know if you it's, saw guys. But I think I saw it already, but yeah. It's the, it's the, it's the, it's, it's another take on this idea of face thumbnails. <laughs> All right, guys. So we're going to bounce. Thanks to everybody for joining. Thanks to everybody for watching. Peace. Give us ideas. Yeah, peace. We're going to be here with Shane a lot uh, whenever I know I'm like, too lazy to plan something or Shane wants to take over, plan something. Or Shane has some, some new checklist we probably will have. Or Maybe there's things coming on my end. We don't know. Yeah. And thanks, Felix, for staying through this, this whole thing. Thanks, Colleen. Thanks, Joshua. Thanks, everybody else who was here. Uh, thanks, The Star. Uh, by the way, we will need the name next time. And thanks, everybody. And thanks, Shane. Any final thoughts, Shane? That's it. That's it. Don't don't uh, don't get bent on uh, lighthouse scores. And start <laughs> reading Google. Our sponsor of the show. Sponsor of. Oh, by the way, we're gonna end with the sponsor of the show, which is Lighthouse Core, is not SEO. YouTube, right, YouTube guys. might be good enough to pick up the fact that we said that, and it's gonna flag this video as sponsored now. <laughs> <laughs> Or it, or it might actually do the opposite. This is this is so cutting edge. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's Anyways. all right, guys. Peace, guys. Bye. See everybody. Bye.